Hey, what's up guys, I'm Lucas Matney, uh, and I'm here with Scott Croyle, who works on product and design at Nextbit. Scott, let's see what you've been working on all this time. Let's check out this Robin phone. Yeah, sure, so this is Robin. This is the world's first, cloud first, design forward smartphone. Mm -hmm. And that means it's designed to never run out of space. So in this world that you know, you're stuck with 16 gigs you know, as your base model from some, from some companies, what does this do differently? How much, how much space are people looking at? How much do they have? Sure, so the way to think about it is that it's 32 gigabytes when you're offline, mm -hmm. so if you're in airplane mode or you don't have a connection, but when you're connected, the phone will look, feel, and act like a phone that has 100 gigabytes. Cool, so out, outside, of, outside of these cloud capabilities, what, what else, I mean, it's definitely a distinctive looking phone. Sure, so I mean, I think there are a couple things that we wanted to do. I think, first of all, nothing's really moving forward in the mobile ecosystem, and like, at least in a, like a big way, and so we wanted to integrate that cloud in the operating system, but do it in a smart way, so that we're not, you know, we're, we're smart in the way we use data, and we're smart in the way we use power. Yeah. So I think we're really conscious about how we wanted to integrate that cloud into the, uh, into the operating system. Cool. And then I think secondly, from an industrial design perspective, you know, if you were to take an iPhone out and every Android phone out there and lay them all out on the table, nothing really stands out. It's yeah. kind of boring right now. Glossy black rectangles. Exactly, exactly. And so, yeah, you know, I think the reality is people are using the same sort of tricks with a little bit of metal, a little bit of brush, a little chamfer to make it shiny. Mm. Um, but we wanted something that got its premium nature from a kind of a very different origin point. Yeah. And so for this design, you know, it's fresh, the use of color, the, the simplicity, the kind of distillation of the design details yeah. really creates this kind of unique, unique phone. Mm -hmm. uh, so you guys launched this on Kickstarter. Why did you feel that was the best avenue for you to go for? Well, I mean, I think there's a, there's a couple of reasons. I think probably the, the biggest reason is we think that the era of, you know, you make a widget, you have a pretty person hold the widget, um, I look at that person on the television screen and think, oh, you know, I'm going to be beautiful, I'm going to be able to hang out with, with those people. We think that's kind of, that's kind of old school. Yeah. We think that there's a unique opportunity to have a two-way conversations with people, particularly people that are interested in technology, that are engaged in um, kind of what's going on and what's moving forward. Mm -hmm. And so Kickstarter really was the perfect platform for us to have, to kind of start that two-way dialogue with people. Yeah. I think that's number one. And then number two, just from a business perspective, it's hard to predict demand and what yeah. that's going to be like come uh, January, February when we, start, when we start shipping. And so Kickstarter you know, gave us this unique opportunity to kind of like test the market and kind of see how interested are people in, mm -hmm. in Robin? Cool, so you guys are going direct to consumers. What kind of flexibilities does that give you in kind of how you act as a company and how you reach out to, reach out to your customers? Sure, so I, I, first of all, there's a whole kind of inflection point that's happening in mobile right now where phones are now being sold direct to consumer. You saw uh, Xiaomi do it over in China, then mm -hmm. OnePlus took it global, now you see Motorola and now Apple actually yeah. all going direct to consumer. So there's, there's a big education that's happening to the consumer about what that means. I think the biggest benefit to the consumer is that there's no bloat on a phone that's sold direct to consumer. Totally. Um, you get faster updates from Google and they do updates on Android. We can actually get that stuff out faster to consumers. And then we can do more frequent updates to our software and keep building in functionality. You know, right now we're focused on solving the storage pain point, you know, that point where you're actually trying to film a, a video at a concert and you actually get that out of space message. So right now we're trying to solve that. But there's tons of other things that we want to do um, next year, and we don't have to wait for a carrier to approve them. We can actually just get them ready, yeah. dog food them internally, get them out to our consumers, and then launch them, um, launch them to the whole to the whole Robin consumer crowd. Totally. So what? Uh, when's when's this guy coming out? Yep. So our Kickstarter campaign has about eight days left, okay. and so that's the the How last chance. How much have chance. you guys raised? We've raised uh, over 1.2 million. We hit our goal okay. in 10 and a half hours, so that was it's been a okay. super incredible yeah. incredible ride. Um, but we'll be able to ship Kickstarter units in January, nice. and then we'll have it be commercially available in February. Cool. So what, uh, you, have a, you have a background at, with design at HTC. What's, how does your go-to-market strategy kind of feel a lot you know, more in, your, in control? How does it feel <laughs> different here? Well, I, I mean, it's fun. I think with any startup, I, one of the cool things is you get, to be involved, you get to be more involved in the business. And so one of the things that, um, we try to do it next, but is make this a very personal exercise. Mm -hmm. You know, we wanted, we're, you know, I've been designing Android phones for a number of years. Tom and Mike, they come from the Android 1.0 teams. And so, you know, we, we're Android enthusiasts ourselves. We love mobile and we love kind of what Google's done along the way and we love the ethos that's been set up there. Yeah. And so not only in the creation of the phone and the software, but I think also kind of having that two-way conversation with people that are really interested in technology and very knowledgeable about, um, about stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. It kind of gave us this unique opportunity to kind of create a fresh voice and a kind of a fresh 
kind of go-to-market strategy and a fresh marketing message. So it's been totally different than, yeah. than uh, what so, I've done before. So a lot of consumers, they're, they're Apple or they're Samsung. Who's, who's the customer base you're trying to reach? What does your ideal kind of customer look like? Well, I think, um, first of all, we think it's a phone that's for everybody. If yeah. you think about the number of 16 gigabyte phones out there or 32 gigabyte phones, in fact, it doesn't matter what storage you have. Apps are getting bigger, we're shooting more photos, we're shooting more video. Mm -hmm. This will continue to be a problem no matter what storage size you have. So I, think, so I think it really, we thought about it from that standpoint that, look, this can be a phone that's really designed for anybody. Um, but I think for early adopters, I think an, like people that are really into Android, that love Android, we think there's a great opportunity there. I think if you look a little further out, you know, just Apple just last week announced another 16 gigabyte iPhone, yeah. which basically will be a feature phone within three or four months after buying it. We think there's a huge opportunity there where people don't have the brand allegiance to Apple that say somebody in their 30s or 40s or 50s do, mm -hmm. number one. Number two is, it's just not moving the ecosystem forward as far as as far as we think it can move, and so I think for the young consumer looking for something fresh and something new that really moves stuff forward, we think there's a huge opportunity there. Yeah, so what, you, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but what are some of the overall uh, trends in the smartphone market that you think Robin is just, it's making the perfect time for Robin to launch? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think there's, a, there's a couple. Obviously, I mentioned direct-to-consumer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the great things we have, there's, like, there's a huge education of the consumer market right now around what does that mean? Um, you know, I still have people come up to me today, it's like, hey, if I get Robin, does that mean I don't have to have a carrier? You know, that still goes on. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, um, there are a large number of people that kind of don't know what that really means, that direct to consumer. So I think that's number one. Number two is, there's this unique dynamic where the existing Android OEMs, the ones that are selling to the carriers, they're not making money. That's been well documented. Mm -hmm. And what that's meant is there's a lot of turmoil that's happening on the, in the mobile side, and, that, and that's because of people like Xiaomi, OnePlus, and now Nextbit exposing the price to the consumer. Now we know yeah. like, what it takes to get a great phone with a Snapdragon processor to the consumer. Mm -hmm. You can say, you know what, actually that should be around, I don't know, $400 today. Yeah. Why would I spend $700 through a carrier? Mm -hmm. And so I think that, that exposure of the price, I think it gives an opportunity to kind of be honest with people and sell them a great phone, much less expensive. Awesome, okay, so give me some quick rundowns What's uh, on some specs on this. What, yeah, what are people sure. looking at? So it has a 5.2 inch full HD screen. It's got dual front facing speakers with dual amplifiers. On the side here you'll see the power button. We also have a fingerprint sensor integrated into that mm -hmm. along with NFC. So when Android Pay and uh, M comes out, um, we're all ready for Marshmallow. It's got USB Type C along with Quick Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0, so you should be able to charge it super, super fast. 13 megapixel camera with what we call optical, I mean, uh, um, phase detection autofocus, which allows you to do super quick autofocus. Dual color, dual LED flash on the back, five megapixel camera on the front. So it really is a terrific phone for people. Cool, awesome. Um, let's see, so. Oh, I should mention one okay. other spec. Yeah. It's got 32 gigabytes when you're on offline, yeah. but 100 gigabytes when you're online. So when you're connected to the cloud, you've got 100 gigabytes available to you. That's awesome. Well, hey, I have enjoyed chatting with you greatly. This is, I mean, it sounds like consumers are pretty, pretty excited about this, but yeah, great, great chatting with you. Uh, all the best. All right, great, thanks all so right. much. Yeah.